so till yesterday actually you know we were <clears throat> we were learning about collections and before that actually we have learned what exactly the exceptions is you know how do we how do we catch and how do we throw exceptions okay now you know today you know uh, i'll continue on the collections okay uh, then you know we'll move to a very basic things like you know uh, about the collections and you know i'll try to introduce couple of collections to you okay uh, depending on that you know we'll go and uh, per, you know do <coughs> sorry yeah depending on that we'll go and you know uh, uh, do some uh, programs you know based on these collections and also you know the in the future there are few topics that i'm gonna cover okay very basic topics actually okay so uh, for those topics as well you know i'm gonna uh, give you a couple of programs okay uh, example as an example okay so let's say you know yesterday you know we covered this one but you know i'm just starting from here uh, because it was very quick so so if you if you even you know if you want to store a similar type of data okay uh, into okay at one place okay so till now actually we were uh, storing only uh, similar type even though it is similar type of data you are creating multiple variables and you know uh, storing that data into you know different different variables right and uh, but if you want to store them into one okay some similarly like you know whatever you see on the screen egg storage tray right so you know egg is you know the only purpose of egg tray right you know it store eggs systematically without breaking them right and it has compartments to store multiple eggs okay at the same time so one tray for multiple eggs instead of having one for each so right you know which sounds very weird correct right like if you wanted to have if you want to store 10 eggs okay if you are using 10 trays it's not a correct thing right so so we were we were we were putting them into one tray uh, which is holding all the 10 x okay so similarly we we have a class okay full of students almost 40 of them and uh, you know if you want to store their names into uh, you know into computer so you definitely know how to do that right you know you are going to create 40 strings for the string variables with name one and name two up to name 40 right and start storing value values in them so similarly what we are trying to do now but is that a correct way no right like you know uh, there should be something like you know it has to store uh, like an egg tray whatever we have it in uh, you know uh, to store those eggs so similarly java is also having uh, certain things so we uh, we certainly call it as array okay uh, you know it can store yeah it can store similar type of similar type of elements into you know uh, in it right so let's see it how it stores okay so an array is like you know special form of storage which store multiple values from of the same type okay so these values are stored one after another okay like a queue or a stack okay and each value is having its own index okay like you know the index will be starting with zero so the first value entered uh, goes to the zeroth position and the last you know and then you know, uh, if you are start keep on entering those values okay uh, it will keep on increasing its index size and it will go for you know up to the size like you know zero to nine on your screen you see so we can store in around 10 elements in it right okay so uh what so similarly actually we do have a uh, certain collections okay uh, there are there are uh, multiple collections we have it in we have it with java okay so there are many actually okay so i just covered like you know uh, very basic things okay so if you want to explore them you can just try and go 
check on it okay but i have given very basic things array list and linked list and hash set tree set and hash map you know there are so many okay so we do have uh, so many collections okay in java and all these come under yeah all these come under you know uh, that's why you know i just took an example of array but you know uh, all these things also you know um, <coughs> you know perform like similarly like array okay but it has its own uh, capability like you know to store elements in a different way okay so let's start with you know array list okay uh, what exactly array list does okay so array list is also pretty much similar to the array what we discussed okay but this uses a dynamic array for sorting uh, for storing the elements okay so it is like an array but there is no size limit okay we can add we can add add or remove elements anytime so it is much flexible you know uh, than the traditional array okay yeah it 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 generally found in the java util dot package okay yeah I'll, I'll show you one example with the list and uh, yeah so if you see here java linker list okay so uh, java linker list actually you know is kind of it's kind of a doubly linker list to store the elements so you can add uh, like you know you can add these elements okay at the starting of the list or you know at the ending of the list as well so both ways you can you know uh, you can you can add those things okay those elements into the structure okay and it provides a linked list data structure so it inherited it it inherits you know the abstract class abstract list class and implements list and dq interfaces okay so it's very so i i i have just given you know a couple of uh, you know differences between uh, the array list and uh, linker list okay so you can find these things actually in the google as well okay uh, but you know we can just go through what exactly these these things does okay if you have any questions you know about uh, the collections and you know the comparison between these things let me know i can cover them okay yeah but it is like very very theoretical okay so i'm i'm just gonna cover them uh, for now uh, but you know for other things actually if it, whatever you see hash set and tree set and hash map you know and so on like you know we do have so many collections just try to visit uh, you know these collections what it does and all those things okay and uh, you know uh, if you have any questions or something please ask me i'll, I'll let them i'll let you know okay so array list right array list you know as i mentioned actually internally uses a dynamic array to store the elements but uh, linker list actually uses double linker list okay you know to store the elements okay manipulations okay array list is very slow because you know it internally uses an array if any element is removed from the array all other elements are shifted in memory okay so let's say you know if you are removing so you have 10 elements okay 0 to 1 so, sorry you have 10 elements that means 0 to 9 was the index okay if you remove the uh, third index value okay so it is going to shift uh, the fourth to three and uh, five to four and like that you know so on up to nine to eight so then you know it it allows us to insert uh, uh, a new value at the ninth position right so that why actually you know our list is little bit slow okay so manipulation with the linker list is faster than our list because it use uh, a doubly linker list so no bit shifting so is required in memory because you can add it okay it in front of sorry yeah so you can just remove that uh, you know couple of things right if you are uh, adding into the linker list or removing into the linker list so you need to worry about the the two okay let's say you know if you are removing 20 right so you don't require to worry entire linker list you know to be changed okay you just need to worry about the 10 and you just need to worry about 30 
so these uh, you know address you know of the next element you know will be getting changed right so that's why so if you remove this one so what we're gonna do uh, you know for the 10 so the next element will be 30 so then 30th 30 element address will be stored at here okay so you know it so it can start assigning start linking with the 30 so that's why linker list is a little fast okay when we compare to the array list okay yeah if you see um, like array list uh, you know we implement only list class sorry list uh, interface so that's why it 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 acts as only as a list okay but uh, linker list is having a dq also so so it it acts as a list and also queue uh, because it implements the list and DQ interfaces. Okay, so array list is better for sorting and accessing data. Linker list is better for manipulating the data. So you know right now what what is the need so when to go with array list and when to go for linker list, right? So when when we have a data which is not getting changed or updates, uh, you know, there 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 won't be any frequent updates on those list. Okay, on the data. So go with array list. Actually, you know it is uh, very much faster. You know in 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 sorting and accessing data. So uh, so you can you can directly use array list. But if you are having a frequent manipulation data, right? You know you know your your application is frequently manipulating those collection. So that means you know in that case you you have to uh, either go with the linker list. Yeah, there are other options also, but uh, you know, for now actually we are comparing only with two, so you have to go with linker list. Okay. The memory location for the elements of an array is contiguous, and you know the location for elements of a linker list is not contiguous. Okay. So generally, when an array list is initialized, the default size will be uh, you know a capacity of ten. Uh, is assigned to the array list and okay there is no uh, case of default capacity in a linker list in linker list an empty list is created when a linker list is initialized okay so to be precise an array list is a resizable array linker list implements the doubly linker list of the list interface okay so yeah, these are very like you know a uh, few of the Few of the comparisons between array list and linker list okay and let me go to the next one okay so i have just uh, given very basic things like about hash set and hash map and tree map okay so what is hash set okay java hash set fits great when you don't want to have a duplicate objects in a collection so when to go with hash set right you know so let's say you know you you are holding some data okay uh, which is having uh, you know a duplicate data you know uh, duplicate objects or uh, in the duplicate objects more okay so in that time actually if you don't want okay those duplicate objects in your collection so you wanted uh, you know uh, a collection with uh, without a duplicate data so then in that cases actually we, we choose hash set you know um, because hash set will not allow a duplicate data into it. Okay. Okay. What is hash map, right? You know, a data requires which a uh, you know with a data which requires a key and value pair. So when whenever it requires like that, so we go with hash map. So generally, an example I can say you know uh, we have a dictionary kind of thing. You know, if you are writing uh, a code for a dictionary, so so you wanted to give a word and definition right so if you have a word and you know if you wanted to give a definition for it so you go with the key as a word and the definition as a value okay so in those cases actually you know you know we need to get insert and remove words from the dictionary quickly okay so you know depending on the hash set uh, sorry hash map you you will just access the key and you know you will get the value and you just make uh, those updates and you know you just store it back or if you want to delete it if you you can delete it okay so 
words will be the keys in the hash table and uh, and they are supposed to be unique so definitions on the other hand will be the values so that way you know in that case actually we go with hash map and when we go with tree map okay so tree map relies on the uh, you know key and value pair okay that cannot contain null values or duplicate entries okay <clears throat> sorry so it is sat, uh, you know sorted in natural order by key okay or in a custom order by another custom comparator okay so if we you know like you know this tree map is generally used you know when you wanted to visualize you know part to all relationship okay part to all relationship among as the largest number of categories Okay, so let me do one thing. I'll just stop here and let me go to Yeah. Just lock it into the red plate. Okay. Yeah. So I just gave uh, a couple of programs over here. Okay. Uh, one second. This is very basic example for I uh, you know uh, the array list. Okay, so what I'm just doing, like you know, I'm I just created an array list, you know, uh, with this syntax. Okay, array list, you know, I'm just using a string type. Okay, uh, with a list, it's a name as list, and you know, uh, we are uh, initializing it with the new string uh, type. Okay. So I, I what I've just added actually I just added a couple of uh, you know um, data into it list dot add and list dot add here and I just tried to print the entire list. So after that you know what what I have done actually you know I just tried to pull uh, one of the Yeah, I, I just tried to pull one, uh, you know, one of the element from the list, okay, using list.get, okay, uh, using list.get of one, and uh, yeah, it it print it will print that, and what I'm trying to do, okay, so I'm just trying to add list.set, uh, you know, uh, for one position, like, you know, I'm just replacing apple with watermelon, okay. And if you guys remember, like actually we 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 talked about for each loop, uh, I know when we are discussing about the loops, but you know we did not uh, had a chance, you know, to uh, see how it works, right? 
so this is the for loop uh, for each loop okay uh, which is trying to print all the list uh, objects sorry all the list elements whatever we have it in the format of a string so it is going to print on the screen so it's very basic example okay so i'm just trying to execute it Yeah, so as I mentioned, like, you know, uh, we just added four uh, different type of uh, fruits into the list. And, uh, you know, when we uh, print this system dot order print list, so it, it, it printed, you know, the entire list first. And, uh, you know, uh, we were just returning element list dot get of one. So the second element, second element is Apple. So we got Apple. And then after that, I, I, I tried to replace that second element apple with watermelon. So it replaced with watermelon. And you know, when it printed the list, actually it gave you the watermelon. Now, uh, when, when it come to the for each loop, right? So what we are doing, the syntax is very simple. So you have to uh, find out what type of, uh, uh, you know, uh, the value that you, you are going to print it, like whether it's an integer, whether it's a fruit, sorry, string. So depending on that, uh, you know, uh, the list, okay? So you are going to create a new variable uh, with the string fruit, okay, colon, and, you know, the list. So this loop is going to retrieve one, one by one, okay, uh, uh, from the list, and you know, it is going to print, you know, on the screen. So mango, watermelon, banana, and grapes. So this is a, like, you know, uh, we have list dot add, list dot set, and, you know, you know, list dot remove. I think list dot remove only. Okay, so, yeah, I'm pretty bad. Okay, so I just, so uh, most probably you can use the intelligence, you know, to find out most of the methods, okay, from the list. Okay, so the default methods of it. Okay, so let me go to the linker list. Okay, so it, it looks very simple. Okay, same same as the one which we saw for array list. Okay, the linker list, and uh, we just used instead of array list, we we used as linker list. Okay, so and we have uh, gave the same thing. Yeah, oh, this is great. Okay. Okay, these are the these are all the methods. Okay, one second. Let me go back to that. Okay, let me go back to the previous example. Okay, so list dot. Okay, if you see here, uh, there are a lot of things, right? You know, list dot add, and you know, add stringy, add all. Okay, contains equals for each get. You know all these things okay yeah remove okay so all, all these are you know uh, like you know the methods which uh, java already provided under the list uh, class okay sorry list interface okay and you 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 have so many things in the array list as well so these are the default methods which was provided by java so you can perform manipulations on array list okay using these things okay and you can also convert them into the parallel stream, okay? In order to print, uh, you know, uh, the elements to use it very fast, okay? So I, I'm going to show that, okay? Later, you know, it's not that, uh, like, you know, whatever the real-time example I cannot provide, but uh, I'll just give one small example about parallel stream, okay? Okay, so with the intelligence, you know, you can uh, get all the methods uh, in the list. So when you do some practice, okay, uh, just try to uh, use, you know, each and every method and see that, you know, what exactly it is doing. Okay, so you, once you do that, okay, you will start, you know, understanding uh, the methods inside of these collections, right? So, yeah, so let us come back to the linker list. Okay, so linker list, you know, the same way, whatever I have done it for array list, actually, you know, I have done the same thing. But yeah, so I was just trying to use an iterator. Okay, so what this iterator does, right? You know, when you have a, a collection, okay, so 
if you want to print all those elements okay one by one okay so this iterator will help us you know to uh, print all those elements you know one by one okay so how do you get this iterator object right you know when you when you see the list okay when you when you have a collection al al is our collection now okay so al will be you know when al itself will be having a method uh, which is iterator and which returns you know uh, object of iterator you know and that iterator is having certain elements sorry certain methods which is you know uh, help us to print those uh, you know those values in the collections in the collection you know to the screen or you know you can use it anywhere okay uh, in the program like you know if you see uh, we are using a while loop and i'm using that object and calling has next okay what is has next so has next is very pretty much simple okay so has next has next has next will check whether this uh, you know collection is having a next element or not if it is having a next element then it is going to return a true and then it comes inside of this loop and you know when you print this iteration you know uh, iterator dot next that means it is going to print your value of the element and then it goes back again to the while loop and it is going to check whether it is a has you know whether it has another value so yes we have vijay so it is going to print vijay again and then it goes back and check for next element ravi and then it prints ravi then it goes back and check uh, next element okay it is there so ajay it's going to print then later if it go back the list is not having any 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 element okay left so so it is going to stop the loop and it comes out okay so the same way you know i'm i'm adding i'm trying to add one element okay at one comma the first position so instead of ravi i'm going to replace with emi okay so so the same way uh, you know i'm trying to get uh, a descending iterator okay so al L is the object, right? You know, for the list. Okay, so I'm just getting the descending iterator. Iterator. So the, what it does, right? So you'll see the difference. Okay. So this is our uh, default sorting kind of thing. Okay. So I'll I'll show you like once I run the program. So, and you know, uh, the method is diff same. You know, uh, has next and next. You know, it is going to print those values on the screen. Okay. So Java linked list one okay if you see here uh, the uh, you know the initial actually you know it, it printed ravi vijay ravi ajay right okay so but uh, later you know i just uh, added invoking position based value where is this yeah yeah if you see here ravi amy vijay and ravi ajay right so what it does actually not here okay i'm sorry yeah so uh, i just use system dot auto print ln okay so uh, we what we are doing we are just invoking position based add value okay so that you know it it gave this al okay the complete values so ravi and we were just adding uh, Amy as a second position. So it printed Amy and Vijay and Ravi and Ajay. Okay. So what it does actually, it did not remove, uh, it did not remove the Vijay, right? You know, uh, it, it just added uh, the new element at this position. Okay. And, you know, it printed everything, right? You know, when you use add. Okay. So, but, uh, when you use the descending order okay so what it does what it did actually you know it, it gave this ajay ravi and vijay and amy and ravi it printed in a different order so uh, the descending or the descending iterator what it does it just you know uh, pulls the values from the end of the list and it comes back to the uh, starting of the list 
okay so that's that's how it does okay so it, that's why it printed ajay first and ravi and vijay amy and ravi next like this so we have plenty of methods okay in each and every collection okay so you guys can explore them okay and you know let me know if you need any specific uh, collection to be explained okay i'll definitely do that uh, but you know for now actually they asked me to uh, like you know give you a brief introduction about collections how why we use them so i just took only a couple of examples uh, i would have like you know if you if you have any questions i'll definitely take that and i'll, I'll definitely explain you know uh, any of the collection if you want okay do let me know in the chat okay so i can uh, you know i can explain it based upon example so i'll i'll do it tomorrow or, or today you know based upon the time okay so let me go back to the ppt so this is what we checked it right now uh, let us go to the threads okay so these are the two things you know which i wanted to discuss okay so let us discuss a scenario first you know why we have a threads okay so when do we use threads okay so the first scenario i have a uh, one project okay uh, where you know where it consider actually you know where do where do we have some manual uploads will be do will be done okay so when i say manual uploads like you know our line of business or you know our users okay they usually upload uh, multiple files okay into uh, okay so let us take one small thing okay so they have a portfolio uh, for every each and every lob will be having a portfolio and they are assigned to that portfolio and what they does actually for this portfolio they re, they prepare some reports okay so these reports you know will be uploaded to them okay uploaded to that portfolios okay so that you know uh, the users like you know the end users can see uh, their own portfolio reports okay you know when they log into the website but behind this actually there are a lot of things we have to do okay so when you when when an internal user or you know when our lob line of business is uploading those reports to the website okay so there are few steps few things that we need to do so these uh, reports will have to store somewhere okay and it has to be available for the you know end users right so what we have done there are certain steps involved in it okay when you upload a report for portfolio we have to be make sure that the uploaded report is a valid report and you know and it is uh, definitely belongs to that portfolio you know uh, so for this validation actually there is a manual intervention will be required what we have done we just added one more extra step you know um, whenever a user uploads okay so for that portfolio we will be maintaining a power user kind of guy or a super user kind of guy so we will uh, ask them to review that report and upload it okay once it is reviewed then it is going to upload so in that case what it does actually these uh, like let's say i upload i have assigned to one of the portfolio and i was trying to upload multiple reports like 100 reports okay today so i uploaded 100 reports and these 100 reports will be reviewed by super user and power user who are there on the application okay and then you know they will uh, try to upload them you know to the portfolio okay so uploading 100 reports in an interactive way is not you know uh, recommendable because you know the screen itself will hang for so long and you know they won't be able to move ahead with the next task okay so what we can do here right so we can uh, either we can go with an asynchronous process or else you know there is a way that you can uh, you know run a thread process internally okay so which can pick up all these approved reports okay so what you're going to do we are just going to uh, update the database saying all these reports are updated as approved okay so in the next cycle you are going to you you can go and you can go ahead and you know uh, upload all these reports so when they approve it 
actually we are just updating the database values with you know with these reports has been approved so these are ready for upload okay so now what it does right you know i have written a scheduler okay which runs every five minutes okay this is kind of a thread process okay which runs every five minutes and it is going to pull that database table you know to find out which are the reports are approved and you know ready to upload so it is sees those 100 reports and internally it does its job you know without knowing you know without having any impact to the user so there are two ways okay so either you can go with a thread process or a scheduler which is running entirely a day uh, in your application either five every five minutes or every 10 minutes something like that with the time frame window okay and the other way you can go with an asynchronous process so whenever uh lob hit lob hit that approve button you can just trigger an asynchronous process like you know uh, as, when i say asynchronous process means the the screen that you are viewing will continue to show you but uh, then an extra trigger will go and hit that process and it is going to start uploading those reports so how we do these things right you know we have certain elements in sorry we have certain classes in uh, you know in the in the java so one is uh, thread class and the other one is you know uh, the runnable class okay so I, I i've just given the same thing over here but you know in a different way okay so we have uh, we have a two step process in a mail service call okay so okay so i have given a different example over here but i explained a different one okay so the 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 example is okay when you are calling a bank service okay you wanted to get a statement okay so you called uh, the net banking uh, number and you know toll free number you just call them and you know you requested for a statement and you ask them to like read out for last five transactions in the call itself in the ivr so they have uh, the ivr actually you know it 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 read out you know the last five transactions of yours and also it internally you requested a mail copy okay uh, of the statement so it internally actually you know uh, triggered that thing okay as a second uh, se second step so first step it is returning immediately back to you as a response and the second step without uh, you know um, without interrupting the current conversation with you it internally triggered uh, you know another asynchronous process you know to send a mail copy to you uh, with uh, the entire statement of you know requested dates so uh, so what do we do right you know to achieve the second step okay uh, we need to we need threads or we need to uh, asynchronous process right so how do you implement thread right you know we 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 generally use uh, threads in you know in two ways okay one is you know with the thread class and also there is a runnable class okay uh, to utilize it okay so let's see you know an example how uh, this runnable class and thread you know uh, performs right one second <clears throat> so I, i'm just showing an implementation only Okay, about okay so if you want to uh, just perform something uh, with the threads okay you have to like start learning those things okay one second yeah this is the thread example okay so there are two things that you need to remember whenever it comes to the thread okay so there are two diff two you know important methods okay uh, which which needs to be come into your picture okay okay the first one is start and the second one is run okay so when you say start it actually started it actually starts an asynchronous thread like you know an asynchronous process okay uh, you know and it calls the run method whatever the run method is having whatever the logic it has inside of it it is going to execute continuously until unless until unless that loops get break okay 
so let's say if you want to keep on running that thread you know until until unless your server is down so you can add a you know you can add a, a default loop or you know um, what kind of infinite loop that you can add it over there and it will keep on running that thread inside of it okay so yeah let's see you know one small example okay how uh, this thread and all performs okay so i i just took one example one class thread example which extends a thread okay so uh, when i say extends thread so thread example is the child class of thread right so whatever the thread classes sorry whatever the thread uh, you know internally whatever the uh, methods it holds actually we can utilize them in this class so so what i'm doing now so i just added a public void run okay and i just added nothing you know i i, I added just you know i added just sleep of 100 and then you know i'm just catching that exception before you know because you know thread dot slip uh, generally it throws an exception okay interrupted exception so we have to catch that so that's why i surrounded uh, the thread dot sleep with try catch blocks okay and you know uh, i just started you know i uh, just added some system out statement and also uh, you know perform some calculation okay so and just i printed that result okay so this is our uh, the run okay so which performs an addition okay but if you wanted to make this thing continuously run for every 10 minutes or every 15 minutes or something like that and you know whenever the uh, loop is like you know uh, like if it reaches like uh, three times or four times something like that the maximum size you're gonna break it okay so otherwise it is going to if you want to run keep on running it you can still running that thread okay but i'll i'll show you uh, the example whatever i have done now and i'm gonna update this one you know to show you how it works you know when you go with an infinite loop okay so uh, what i've done i just added a static void main method and you know i just created an example sorry uh, object of thread example okay t1 and i did not call t1 dot run but i called t1 dot start right so what it does so when you call t1 dot start okay it internally calls the run run method okay and it is going to start executing the the values whatever you see sorry the statements whatever you see inside that run method okay so it is pretty simple so if you want to call t1 dot run if you call okay so it's not an asynchronous process okay so you have to call t1 dot start you know to make sure it it is an asynchronous process you know it is going to call it okay the run method okay so let let us run actually you know you will see some Example. Yeah, so if you see here first, actually it just started, it started running. So it printed this and and it, it printed again that it started running. And some of the two numbers actually it gave you the 22. And then actually, it, okay, so if you see there is only one small thing uh, in between. I just, uh, you know, added a sleep over here and here also but the sleep whatever we have it here is you know 100 milliseconds okay and here 1000 right so that's why you know it it took some time you know to print these things otherwise you know these uh, these should be you know printed uh, first and you know later actually it should print all these things okay but so i'll i'll show you one okay so if you wanted to go with a uh, infinite loop okay so generally we do something like this while true and you are going to add this entire statements okay inside this while true okay so when you break it right you know you have to break this loop 
some time otherwise you know uh, you can keep this while loop keep on running and it is going to you know one second okay so if you see here so what i'm doing i'm just you know uh, falling into an infinite loop okay so generally uh, these threads are used in the obligations right so so you have to be very careful uh, when you wanted to break this uh, while loop right you know either way if you don't want to break it as it should run as a service you know along until unless your system is up and running and you can still do that okay but if you wanted to break it you have to write some break logic okay inside the while true block okay so right now you know i'm not breaking it okay i'm just running this one so how it performs right you know it is going to keep on printing that java oh sorry see it goes like that okay so i'm just stopping it because you know i don't want to mess up with uh, the system okay so so I, I just stopped it okay i just you know click control c and you know stop that flow okay so you know it it will be like this okay it is a continuous loop which is still running okay but i break i, I you know i stopped it uh, you know execution of that program so if you wanted to uh, do some asynchronous process which has to be like you know work as a service for a long time you can go with these threads and you know you can write whatever the logic you have you have it but in the market right now we have very pretty much good options like you know spring batch and uh, there are other things like you know uh, whatever the whatever the loops that you are trying to do you can also use autosys okay uh, you know autosys has a scheduler and you know you just write whatever the business functionality what you wanted to do and just give that to autosys okay so autosys is giving you know uh, pretty much good options when to run you know it is going to hand, handle the holiday calendar as well and it is going to uh, give you a certain options like which time it you have to trigger and not we have any dependencies okay so there are a lot of options in the market but you know nowadays actually mostly people are interested with the spring batch and you know uh, you know autosys in that area uh, you know for scheduling something in the java okay so so not only java okay autosys supports many things okay but you know uh, as we are covering only java so that's why you know i just gave this thread example but you know there are so much alternatives we have it you know instead of going with threads so generally they are preferring to go with spring batch you know because of the new concepts and you know because of you know the new advantages when we go with those concepts right like you know autosys and autosys autosys is actually you know will provide more uh, you know gui kind of things okay A user interface so you can just drag in like you know you can just uh, uh, do some button clicks and you know you can set up a job okay very easily okay so you have to write the code okay only the business functionality code uh, other than that you know which everything is on you know the button clicks only you know to set up the job so yeah uh, this is one alternative like you know for threads okay okay let me go back to the ppt okay so parallel processing and functional programming okay so in java actually now we can achieve this parallel processing using parallel streams okay so stream api actually it introduced at java 8 okay and you know it is it 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 actually helps us you know to process the collections you know in of collection of objects in efficient way okay so I, I'll I'll tell you I'll give you an example of parallel processing and you know using an int stream okay and parallel method okay I'll I'm I'm gonna give that example so you know till now uh, when it come to the functional programming actually till now Java was supporting okay uh, an imperative style of programming 
okay so when you compare with python okay so python you don't require to write this class you know and this uh, kind of you know all those creating objects you can just directly write something and print okay uh, print some values on the screen itself so i'll show you something okay uh, when i when i go back Okay, one second. Okay, so if you see here, yeah, this is you know, uh, this is pretty much okay, uh, like you know, very small uh, Python program. Okay, so you can just directly run this. Okay, if you run it, it automatically prints. Okay, so this is hello world, and how are you, and you know some you know i just added some text okay so you don't require to write you know uh, if you wanted to print something hello world on the screen you don't require to write some okay a class and inside a void main and then you write some system dot 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 print and hello world so okay so uh, you are you are removing all those object related object oriented programming and you're just coming into the functional programming so here the function is a king okay so you you can uh, like you know you can create an object inside that function you can utilize it and you can do everything uh, in that function itself so so we were moving like you know java is moving from uh, the basic uh, the basic sorry the basic programming like whatever we are doing it from earlier like you know classes to uh, functional programming okay so let me go back to that java okay so that's why i mentioned you know so far java was supporting the imperative style of programming okay and object oriented style of programming so the next you know the next big thing is you know uh, what java has been added java has started supporting the functional style style of programming so when it says function functional style of programming so the functions are considered as high you know first class citizens so that is so you know we can pass objects to a function we can create objects within the function we can return objects from a function okay and do a lot of new ways you know to speed up your code okay uh, like so let us let us try to uh, uh, you know get some idea what what are all these palette processing and functional programming with a simple example okay you know not deeper so if you go deep into this you know this is a very big topic you know uh, to discuss you know and it will go entire day okay so I, i'm just a bit covering uh, giving you some example like you know what are all the things that keep on adding java uh, to the java and you know it is making java better and better you know day by day okay so these are the two concepts okay uh, let me go back to the programming sorry one second okay so i have a couple of examples stream example and parallel processing and the lambda example okay so mostly you know i'll start with uh, lambda first and then go uh, to the next one okay so what is this lambda right you know you know if you see here generally you know you if you wanted to print something okay if you wanted to print something you are writing some code uh, with the for for each loop and you know uh, we we already saw that actually default uh, when you are printing an array list okay so now using a lambda expression okay how do you print those values okay so if you see here line number 17 okay so what i've done actually i have a, an array list okay uh, which is holding some values array list dot for each so for each is our method okay uh, like you know to iterate all the elements right so array is for each and you are writing an you know uh, you are you are taking uh, a value uh, which is like n 
and what you need to do with that n so this is n is representing the elements inside of your array list okay and you know uh, each you don't require to iterate it actually you know it is going to iterate on its own okay and what it does with that value so it is going to print on the screen okay uh, in in system dot out dot print ln right so it is it is very simple right you know you are just writing a one line code okay earlier you, you are writing like for each and you know you are declaring some variable and you know you are uh, colon and then you, know, you are adding that uh, object over there and then you know once it is uh, there you know in the next line you are just adding system dot 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 print ln and you are printing that object right so it is very simple right you know you just like uh, you are putting everything into one 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 line and you know you are you are achieving the same thing okay uh, you know with the lambda expression right so in the similar way actually you know uh, we are trying to print some even elements okay so you have written a condition inside uh, that for each loop okay uh, with an element of n right so this is called like you know uh, more likely you know you are moving it to the functional program you are just creating you are just playing with these objects okay so the lambda expression is helping you you know to uh, make the code very better okay you know in performing some of the operations so let us try to execute this yeah uh, sometimes actually these things are very uh, like you know uh, uh, uh these these things are were these things were introduced on java 8 okay so um it it might be tough for you guys you know to understand uh, all these things but you know I, I tried my best you know to give the basics okay so you know to move these kind of concepts you have to practice them and you know you have to learn them properly uh you know with proper syntax and how we are doing it okay so then only you'll be able to understand these things okay so but i'm just giving very basic examples you know to make sure you to understand this okay there are a lot of things that we can do with this lambda expressions and parallel processing and all okay yeah i'll, I'll give you some runtime some you know real time examples okay just me just a minute let me run this one lambda. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, if you see here, uh, it printed one, two, three, four first, and then two, four. So that means, you know, uh, the first 17th line executed and it printed one, two, three, four, and 21 line executed and it printed two, four. So that means it is working, right? You know, it printed even elements, okay, for us. So it is pretty simple, right? You know, when you use a lambda expression, okay? So you are just writing uh, in one line, okay? You are achieving, you know, so many things. So if you if you see here, what you are trying to do, you are just opening, uh, you know, a flower braces and, you know, you're just closing a flower braces, okay? So that means, you know, it doesn't have any name or anything but it's still acting as a function and you know it is giving you uh, you know uh, a certain output that you are expecting right so this is how uh, the syntax of it okay uh, this is how you know the entry of you know the functional programming okay uh, in java okay so lambda expression is one of it and then you know you can uh, utilize this lambda expression in many ways okay uh, Okay, so if you want to uh, get more details on Lambda expression, okay, Lambda expression, why and where we use it and all those things, examples, okay, you can still visit, okay. And if you need more details on the Lambda expressions in, in what scenarios, okay, let me know in the chat. So you can, yeah, I, I'll try to explain more, more on this Lambda examples, okay. And for now, actually, let me go to the parallel example, okay. I just wanted to close these things, you know, today yeah so parallel example right you know where uh, we use this parallel processing okay so I, I have one small example okay so um, 
so let's say you know you guys have a loan okay um like you know you took a personal loan okay and uh, now after a few months actually you have enough money to close it okay but uh, you don't know how much uh, amount that you need to pay all right so what you what you're going to do uh, you are you are going to call a service okay sorry you are going to call uh, you know um, your bank's ivr number okay and you know uh, ivr once you once you connected to the ivr you just asked i need a pay of quote you know to my loan right so what it does actually it is going to say okay uh, give me a second so i can get your uh, you know uh, the outstanding amount of the loan and you can pay it okay so what it does actually it go and hit internally uh, multiple services okay it's not like you know it is going to give go and check the database table and give you the output immediately right you know it has to go uh, with the process right so there are certain uh, services that it internally needs to hit it okay so first service you it has to get your complete details of the customer and the second service you have to get your loan details and then it has to perform some calculation based upon that day whatever you requested you know it has to calculate the interest and it has to calculate some other fees if you are whatever it has so there are like three or four services internally calls right and then once you know all these services get called we got the response and you know it is going to process that response and you know it is going to return back to you saying that this is your amount okay final amount to pay off your loan okay so uh, before coming to you actually it executed a lot of things okay so you know if you go with a serialization process no sorry i'm sorry okay if you go with a uh, sequence okay one by one okay of calling first service calling second service and calling third service and finally it is going to process that response and give it back to you you know uh, the output right so this takes like you know very weird right like you know it will uh, generally you know all the services will be having certain uh, slas right you know response time should be restricted you know very limited because ivr we cannot wait the customer you know for more than 2 seconds or 3 seconds right so in that cases actually what we does we are going to use a parallel processing okay instead of calling one by one service okay we are going to synchronously call all the services at one time and you know get the response okay and you know uh, you 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 process that response okay and return back to the client okay so with this parallel processing actually you can achieve you know uh, a very less time of response you know for all these services so let's say now each and service each service was taking one second so you earlier you are taking four seconds to response now with the parallel processing what you do you utilize the core uh, you know uh, you know uh, the the what what do we say like you know the processor uh speed and everything in your computer and utilizing those parallel processing with the help of your computer and you know you are calling these three services at one time so that means to execute uh, in the sequential manner you, you, if you execute it you are using you, you are having 3 seconds to execute it now with the parallel processing you are achieving it in 1 second so 1 second you call these three services parallelly and get this response and process it and send it back so 2 seconds the uh, the client will be having you know uh, the response in you know uh, with him but in the previous one you know you are having for 4 seconds so that means you know 2 seconds were delay right so this is how we uh, you know we achieve something you know with the parallel processing so let us you know take this example okay this is very basic example okay and it will not show you something like what it, whatever that i explained but that was very <clears throat> that was very like you know uh, you know real time example you know for you guys okay okay so but i can show you something okay if you execute a normal one okay so using a for each for each loop okay so what we are doing we are just printing uh, you know all the uh, all the in stream values okay which are from 1 to 10 
okay we are just printing it range dot for each okay so uh, now i'm just printing it as a parallel way okay uh, you know uh, the range uh, range closed you know at from 1 to 10 and if, if i used range 2 dot parallel dot for each okay see how it does okay it is going to pull uh, you know one by one not one by one right you know it is it is trying to parallelly executing them okay so that's why you don't see an order of it okay so it just pull everything and you know it is just printing it how to check whether it is running in a parallel way or not so there is a method that you can still use it range 2 dot is parallel so okay so this is parallel will help us okay uh, to find out whether you know your process is running in the parallel way or not okay so it is parallel will give you saying that okay this is a parallel processing or not okay so it is very basic example uh, but i just wanted to give you that uh, a view but the 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 real time example i already uh, gave you in the theory okay so let me go to the stream okay so what exactly the stream is right you know the streams are you know helping us you know to find you know to very <clears throat> to perform some operations on the collections right you know we we generally use uh, the streams okay and you know if you see here what i've done actually i just took an example uh, you know you uh, you have a list okay which is having some uh, some elements in it okay and i printed that list okay now what i'm doing right you know i just wanted to have a filter out okay only with starting with g elements i wanted to print it otherwise you know i can just remote okay so there is a predicate class okay uh, what is this predicate does actually you know predicate is kind of uh, having a test uh, you know method uh, we can write uh, some conditions over there in the predicates okay so what i've done i just added a predicate uh, for item starting with g okay so this means like you know this predicate will help us you know to filter out only the values with g okay so yeah i just added this and then you know i just converted this list dot stream and now what i'm doing with that stream i'm going to filter out the predicate okay and using for each and i'm just printing it okay so how simple right you know when you have streams okay so you can play with uh, the collections in very you know very easy way okay <clears throat> so let me stream example okay see now you know in the initial list actually you have good a uh, computer portal for ghost okay and the later you know stream uh, from list you know which item starting with g okay so you are just predicating it so finally you got only two good and ghost okay so hope you guys understand this concepts but you know this has very like you know it's not those basic concepts that whatever we covered it uh, but you know this examples uh you know at least you know will make you understand uh you know this uh i like these concepts whatever we discussed today if you uh, have any questions or any doubts or something you know please do let me know i'll try to cover more on these but you know uh with this actually you know i i just covered you know the most of the concepts whatever we have it on the first uh slide okay uh first slide okay so yeah, I, I did not share this PPT. I'm sorry, like, but you know, I'm gonna share it uh, once uh, once this is once the entire week topics is done. So I have uh, completed for the first entire week topics. Okay, so I will uh, send these uh, PPT, I uh, you know, to you all for the for your reference. And from starting from tomorrow, I think you know, I'm gonna start with these things, these concepts. Okay. Uh, for the second week okay and yeah i'll continue for third week and fourth and fifth week you know these are the uh these are the five days uh five weeks actually but you know i'm little bit delayed you know because of the uh concepts whatever we have it on the first slide actually it is like too much theoretical concepts was there so yeah it took some time you know to complete that but yeah it's okay i'm gonna cover them uh you know each and every topic whatever we have discussed sorry whatever we have it in this index okay starting from tomorrow i'm gonna cover these things 
okay so if you have any questions or if you need anything like you know to uh, to repeat or you know to find out uh, to to give more example do let me know i'm ready to help you guys okay so um yeah if you have any feedback also please do let me know so that i can correct myself and you know uh, give more details on the concepts yeah thanks all that's all for today you know if you have any questions you know please uh, let me know thanks everyone Uh, can you say, can you tell more about Lambda in the next session? Yeah, sure, Divya. Yeah, I'll yeah, try to. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Thanks, all.